Yes. Would you consider taking the money that you're using to fight the marijuana law that um, the majority of South Dakotans voted to enact, would you take that money that you're using to prosecute that and drop a lawsuit to fight the defend Title IX instead? I'm not spending any money to fight <coughs> marijuana. In fact, this year you're the- You're spending taxpayer dollars to go to court to defend it, and it was the vast majority of South Dakotans that voted it in. So would you- That was based on constitutional reasons, though. Correct. If you remember, it is when I get sworn in as governor, I take an oath to uphold the Constitution. Would you consider taking the money from that argument that you're having right now and instead spend it on a losing battle against the NCAA? So when, when I get sworn in as governor, I take an oath to the state constitution and the U.S. Constitution to uphold those constitutions. Um, and that is what and why we are challenging the marijuana ballot measure as it was proposed because it was unconstitutional so and how it was drafted and interacted. Uh, so that we will continue doing that. Um, but based on that, we also this year, the taxpayers are spending money to put forward programs to regulate medical marijuana as well. So- I guess that's a theme, a theme throughout your administration. What's the theme? Going against the will of the voters. Oh, you think so? Did the voters vote on Title IX? No, no, that's to not tear it down? I'm just saying that you're using taxpayer money to fight these Actually, what I'm doing right now, lose. what I'm doing right now is not using any taxpayer money. This is a coalition of people. There is no state funds going to this. There is no uh, resources that we're using uh, beyond uh, that this will be a coalition of people working together to defend Title IX. Um, and I, that is a federal law that has created opportunities for women uh, that I think a lot of people would like to have a discussion on upholding. Next question, please. Joe? Is there ever a time when it would be appropriate for a trans girl to play uh, girl sports in South Dakota? You know, there's, uh, biologically, is that what you're asking, Joe? I believe well, girls should play girls rated? sports based on their birth certificates. Well, is there a, With all my opening statement, I talked about the differences. Sure. Um, uh, are there... There's no competitive advantage for a trans girl. How do you, who determines that though? Who determines? I'm, I'm asking you. Yeah, I, I, I don't see one where there wouldn't be a competitive advantage, but who would determine that, how we would come to that, what boxes do you have to check? You could see the convoluted processes you would get into. If, if Fold 17 does go into law, are you worried at all about the economic impact that could have on South Dakota? I mean, no. experts say it could be millions of dollars if it's some league and it has and division two wrestling get out of here. The way that I've issued the style and form revisions, no, I'm not concerned about the impact on South Dakota. Have you had any conversations with people that are involved in those permits going here through this whole process? Yes. Okay. Can you say who? Uh, no, I didn't ask them if I could share their names today, but yes, we've had multiple conversations uh, with them and with others uh, discussing what the legal ramifications, challenges are, and of course, a lot of it's been public too. There was some public comments that were made after Idaho passed its law. Um, there's been some discussions that have been made since Mississippi as well passed their law. Um, you know, we, it's not a secret as to how the NCAA feels about these types of state laws. You just mentioned other states. Uh -huh. Are any of those governors signing on? Idaho is in uh, a legal challenge right now. And yes, Tate Reeves from Mississippi has signed on to the coalition. Governor Stitt from Oklahoma has indicated his support as well. There's several other governors that um, are having uh, the coalition go through their legal general counsel recommendations, but they're generally supportive of the idea. Governor, um, you were criticized by Alliance Defending Freedom mm -hmm. over the weekend after you issued mm -hmm. the uh, challenge for you know. uh, Now, with this uh, coalition, it's mm -hmm. uh, kind of positioning you at the forefront of this issue. Um, I'm wondering, when you came up with this coalition, did you uh, think about the the impact on transgender people in the state? Um, and did you consider that you know using this issue that would affect their lives um, it would be done for political uh, expediency or, or gain? Oh, it's not for political expediency or gain. And absolutely, I do think about them. That's why this coalition is specifically formed around girls playing girls sports. It's on the differences between men and women and the competitiveness of, of how they physically are built. It's not a transgender bill. And if you were to put it in that context, that would be completely inaccurate. Can I it is that? specifically about protecting Title IX and about women playing women's sports 
It is not about transgender. And mm -hmm. that is, there's nothing in this coalition or in this discussion today that has to do with that issue. But the only group of people that this would affect would yes. be transgender people. So it's, hey, say you bet. Go ahead, Herschel. in women's sports. And it's sort of like I made a statement about uh, a week ago that if they start doing something like this, uh, you can take myself as an example. At my age today, uh, now I can classify myself as a woman and go and compete in the Olympics. And, uh, and I probably can win a gold medal in certain events in the Olympics today. Uh, saying I'm a woman, so what, who would you consider a transgender to be able to compete uh, at, in Title IX? So that's why we have to protect the transgenders of women and uh, with Title IX. Thank you, Herschel. We appreciate that. Governor, uh, just going back to my question. Um, if, if it doesn't affect uh, transgender people, who does it affect? It affects women. For years, for decades, women have fought for an equal playing field, for equal opportunities, for scholarship money, for programs they can participate in, and to be treated the same as men. That's what Title IX is all about. And it's being threatened by some of the conversations that are happening at the national level, different policies that are happening, part of the decision-making process that happens within the NCAA on where tournaments go, how it's determined, their inclusivity po policies, how vague they are and how they've been used in the past. That's why it's important to have an honest conversation about Title IX and make sure we're having a discussion to defend it and keep that right for women out there. Would this bill affect transgender girls who want to play in girls' sports leagues? Transgender girls who want to play in girls' sports leagues? It will affect girls being able to continue to play girls' sports. And that's how we believe that girls' sports should be defined. All right, guys, thank you. All right, thank you, everybody. Appreciate you coming. Thank you guys. Um,